take out my scalpel, cut you, split you open. And the angel's going to pull out what needs to be pulled out in your life this morning. God wants you free more than you want to be free. I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you, he wants us free. And uh, this is in the heart of God. And, and this series is talking, I'm talking about uh, breaking the snares and traps of destiny and dream stillers. I mean, there's a lot of snares and traps that the enemy has set up in your life that you're not even aware of, and you're wondering why your life is like it is. Well, you've been trapped into some things and some snares and some pits and some holes uh, that God wants you free from. This, I'm not going to go back uh, last week's message. You're going to have to get, go get the, get the CD, uh, get the DVD, but I'll just go a quick review of what I talked about last week, about God wants in Isaiah 42, he said, the set, no one is taking attention to set the captives free. No one wants to do deliverance. Who would take ear to this? And he talks about in Isaiah 42 that uh, the, the Israel was supposed to be the glory of the Lord, but they were bound. They were bound uh, by the devil. They were bound by the heathen, and they were in captivity. But he wanted them free, and he wants everyone free uh, to be free. Uh, uh, rebellion is one of the snares that causes captivity. When we rebel against what God said, in Isaiah 42, uh, God made them go into captivity because they rebelled against his covenant. Uh, then he decreed in Isaiah 49 that he was going to send deliverance for the captives. And uh, Jesus came and he brought deliverance. He said in Luke 4, 18, the Lord has sent me, he uh, anointed me to bring deliverance, preach deliverance to the captives. And so Jesus uh, has broken the chains of the enemy, but there's still people that are still bound in chains because the enemy won't let them go. And so we got to come in and break the enemy and break his grip off of your life and show you the areas that our doors have been open in your life so you can claim that land back where the enemy is stolen. A lot of us don't even know that you had inheritance. Uh, 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 some people, when, you pay, when uh, somebody dies, your cousins run in the house and they steal everything out of the house and it's supposed to be in your inheritance, but they got in while the person was in the hospital bed, they was in the house taking stuff out of the house and it belonged to you. And the devil was still like that. He'll, 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 he'll take things from you. So uh, the Lord said, we shall build up the old waste places. And when we moved across the street, it was an old waste place, an old barn full of holes, birds everywhere, grass everywhere. But we rebuilt it and, and, and uh, uh, gave it back to the Lord. The Lord said, I want it back. I said, you can have it back. I don't need to build it. Amen. I want, I'm in the kingdom. I mean, know that you don't need a church. You need to be in the kingdom, not in the church. You need to be in the kingdom, not in the building. If you got the kingdom in you, then uh, any, you can worship God anywhere. Uh, Moses became, a, I talked about Moses becoming a snare to Pharaoh. But as long as Moses was in the land, Pharaoh got hit with plagues. I mean, he was there. And in fact, Pharaoh said, Moses, you were snare. How long will you let Moses be in his land? Because he's a snare to us. He has snared us uh, uh, because he's serving the living God, and the living God wants to set the captives free. And even though the people were snared, Pharaoh said, uh, uh, I'll let the men go, but I ain't going to let the kids and, and the women go. No, the devil's got to let your whole family go. He can't just let you go, let the men go and worship. Everybody's got to come out of bondage. Everybody's got to come out of the trap. And the enemy will try to keep your children in bondage. So uh, another snare is don't be unequally unyoked with an unbeliever. That's a snare. God's very clear. He said, don't go make a covenant with them. Don't make, don't serve their gods. Least they, they sin against me and they serve their God. And surely it will be a snare to you. When you have somebody that ain't saved and you save, you're going to have trouble in that house. And you get unequally unyoked with an unbeliever and all their demons and their family bloodline is going to come in your house. You got to be yoked with somebody that, lo that loves the Lord at the same time. It, it's plain and simple. I've seen saints over the years, 30 years. They still don't believe it that they're they supposed to be unequally unyoked. They still try to make it work. It don't work. It don't. It will never work unless God get them saved. And that's a battle by itself. You can ask some of the saints in here how many years they prayed to get somebody saved. You got to fight for your freedom. Uh, uh, you got to break down. He said, you shall destroy their altars, destroy their images, and cut down their groves. You got to destroy everything that your father did. Every sin, everything he committed, every altar he worshiped at, everything he did. You got to break that thing in your life so you don't repeat what he repeated. Amen? Everything has to be, you have to destroy. You got to destroy images. Their images. Uh, break covenant brings a snare. When you make a, uh, uh, I'll get into that later, but breaking covenant with God is a snare. 
God told the children of Israel, if you break this covenant, he told Moses, he told Abraham, he said, take, a, take this a lamb, take a, 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 a ram and, and split him in half and split the per- and stand and, and, walk, and it said the burning furnace and the smoking lamp walked in between. And God said, this is my covenant. Then he told the, father, the elders of Israel, he said, now, you know what happened to those animals? How they were split in half? You rebel against me, I'm going to split you in half like you did to broke the covenant. Now, he, he, he's a jealous God. He don't play. When you make a covenant with God, he don't give bills of divorcement. So you can play crazy if you want to. He will chase you for 20, 30 years. <laughs> he ain't going to divorce you. When you say, Lord, I serve you, you ain't getting away. You ain't getting away. He not a pull the slack out of your chain in a minute. Wealth and riches. I talked about wealth and riches can be a share. We talked about Gideon. Uh, he was the poorest in the projects. He was poorer than poor. He said, I'm the poorest family in the project. God said, but you're a mighty man of valor. I'm going to give you the victory. And he went to the elders of the city, and the elders of the city said, who you think you are, you old raggedy thing? You, you ain't, it's your poor self. We ain't helping you do nothing. And he went and won the battle, and he came back and whooped all of them. But he told the people, he said, I don't want anything. Give me all your earrings, you know, your nose jewels, your earrings. And he took all the gold, and he made a golden ephod out of it, and he caused people to sin and come worship it. Now, can you imagine? I said, it's like taking a golden ephod and taking it back to the hood is like having 24-inch gold rims on your car in the hood in a raggedy car. Everybody's going to try to steal your rims. Everybody's going to want to come in and, and see your car. That's what he did. He took a golden uh, vest and put it in, the, in, in it. Everybody came again to worship this golden vest. Look at all that gold. Look at all that gold. He's showing off. And he, the Bible says he caused them to be snared by the enemy in idolatry. So that ephod, ephod in the... Uh, in, uh, when the tabernacle, the priest would wear this. We had 12 stones of all the 12 tribes, and the priest would wear it. And if there was trouble in the camp, uh, they would each tribe would come stand before the Lord, whoever did the crime, and the light would light up whoever did the crime. It would, it would, it, it, God had a computer way back then. It would light up. He say, "He the one." That's how they got the uh, Achan. They brought everybody in, and Achan come walking through. Beep 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 beep. The light, everything went off. All the lights went off. <laughs> <laughs> and I talked about marrying the wrong person is a snare. Snare. And I talked about how the people were praising David that gave him his 10,000 and Saul only killed 1,000. And Saul got jealous. Saul saw his destiny. He saw that he was going to be great. And what he did, he said, your daughter Michelle likes David. David said, oh, look what he said. He said in, in uh, 1 Samuel 18, 20, and Saul said, I will give him her that she may be a snare to him. That the hand of the Philistines may begin. Saul knew his daughter was controlling, domineering, and mouthy. He said, I'm going to put him on him, and it's going to be a snare to him. He think he's getting something good. I'm getting rid of her. Amen. <laughs> I'm getting her out of the house, and I'm going to give him to David. So David got Michelle, who was a, a, a big mouth, Jezebel, controlling, domineering type of person, and, and, and became a snare. And when David was trying to bring the ark in, he's trying to worship the Lord. She in the window talking about, why are you out there dancing? You're embarrassing me and all this kind of stuff. And God smote her, and she was barren because she opened up a big mouth against the glory of God. So when you marry the wrong person and you ain't checked their family tree and you ain't fact they check their family background, I mean, if you go over their house and all of them arguing all the time, that should be a sign that that's what's going to come to your house. It's just a habit that they have. Everybody likes to fight, so you're going to have a family that likes to fight. If everybody in their family got a divorce, guess what? That spirit is going to follow you into your marriage. So we've got to look for the snares that the enemy is bringing in the marriage. And some of y'all can attest. Because you Be like me, you're a two-time loser, one-time loser. Amen. You got to divorce because you messed up the first time. Amen. And so we got to get it right before the Lord. If we get it right, the wrong person will become a snare. Now, we got a war against those that are wicked. There are wicked people in the earth, wicked people in your family, wicked people that, that want to take your blessings and, and have stolen blessings and have stolen things in your bloodline. If I think about it, you start thinking about in your family, you can go back to your aunties and stuff that you know she was a witch. <laughs> you know she was a witch. Everybody in the family knew she was a, doing some kind of stuff. 
But guess what? She was stealing y'all blessings while y'all was calling her a witch. She was over there stealing your destiny and your blessings uh, because uh, you didn't know what she was doing. Amen? So the, Job said that the light of wicked shall be made a wicked. I'm not going to go into Job, but I'm going to go, I'm going to, go to idolatry is a snare. We know that the, uh, Moloch and Chemosh are, were demons, that they sacrificed the children into these hot hands, and they would burn the children up in the fire. That was a spirit of abortion and the spirit of Chemosh. That is a snare. Uh, 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 females have all kinds of problems after abortions. They have all kinds of female problems, fibroid tumors, all kinds of uh, blood issues, all kinds of things go wrong in the body because the door is open because the spirit of murder of one own child has come in and the spirit of murder vexes the person, vexes the woman and she don't realize why, how, what's going on. But these are demons that are attached to these sacrifices that we do ignorantly. Ignorantly. So God wants us free. And we talked about a uh, uh, in Proverbs 7, you can read that. Get the tape from last week. There's just a lot in there. Samson got messed up with the wrong woman, with a harlot. And she nagged him until he lost his, his anointing. She nagged him. And so that, that you need to read about this, Proverbs 7, uh, the adulterous woman. And then I talked about Proverbs 7. Uh, 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 when you're dealing with the adulterous woman, when you yield to her, she, the Bible says in uh, Proverbs 7, 22, when the man yields to her, he goes after her straightway. As an ox goeth to the slaughter, so as a fool to the correction of stocks. Uh, as I was studying this and I looked it up, an uh, ox has a nose ring in his nose where they pull him around, they lead him around. That word, that ring, the word is snare. It's called a snare. And so we got all these little kids running around here with nose rings in and have been snared by the enemy. It's a sign of idolatry. It's a sign that you're a slave. It's a sign you've been captive by the world and the world thing. So all these earrings and nose jewels and piercings, demons are attached to them. And so when they're attached to them, that means they're stealing your destiny, they steal your rest, they steal your peace. They, it's a spirit of rebellion comes in, a spirit of disobedience comes in, a spirit of lust comes in, a spirit of perversion comes in, and these demons begin to take over your life and uh, uh, destroy you. So you, you need to not white, walk that tightrope. Many people are walking this grace tightrope where, where, where you, you, you walk this thing, you need to walk in the middle of the road, not try to get so far to the edge where you fall over. You need to walk straight. To, the Bible says her, her house goes to hell. Slander and gossip is another snare. People that run their mouth, motor mouths, uh, uh, that's a snare. Put a guard over my lips. Uh, 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 and here we go. Uh, Jephthah, I talked about Jephthah. Uh, when you open up your mouth and make promises, he vowed a vow. He said, Lord, if you give me victory, Whatever comes out of my house, the first thing come out of my house, I'll sacrifice it unto you. Now, he's a soldier. He was used to his dog come running out the house when he come. You know, see him come down the door. He thought the dog would come out. His daughter ran out, and he had, and he had to sacrifice. She sacrificed herself unto the Lord because he made a vow unto the Lord. When you vow unto God and don't keep it, it will destroy you. God will keep your word. Let me, let me read this. Keep your word. Ecclesiastes 5, verse 4 to 6. When you vow a vow to God, Lord, I'm going to serve you all the days of my life. Lord, I praise you. I'm going to serve you all the days of life. Defer not to pay it, for he have no pleasure in fools. Pay that which you have vowed. If you said, Lord told you to put $100 in the office, I'm going to do it, Lord, I'm going to do it, and you don't do it, look, read what happened. He says, better that you don't vow a vow to God then thou should vow and not pay. Amen. I remember vowing vows to God. Oh, Lord, if you get me out, I hit my head over the toilet, throwing up because all that drinking I did. Lord, if you get me out of this one, I'm, I'm going to serve you all the days of my life. And went right back to the bottle after I got through making that vow. Suffer not your mouth to cause your flesh to sin. How many ever... Uh, get your Mac on, your game on, you're rapping. Ah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be with you all the days of my life, baby. You vowed a vow. Now you can't stand up. What happened to that vow? 
You just stood between all these witnesses and everybody in the church. Amen. Wow, this is my wife. I'm going to marry you. Say with you all the days of my life. And then next thing you know, you want to divorce. What you do, stand before God and lie? Oh, this is the woman God gave me. Oh, okay. Now he's Christophenic and he didn't know what he was doing when he gave you her. Oh, it's quiet in there. That's why I'm going to go over on this side. There's only about four of them over here. <laughs> He says, suffer not your mouth to cause your flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at your voice and destroy the works of your hands? You go on a job, you work 40 hour a week, and before you can get your paycheck in your hand, it's gone. The works of your hands, nothing seems to work. When, you, when God breath, curses the works of your hand, nothing works. You're always running out of money. The money ain't never enough money. You always got more months than you got money. You got more bills than you got money. It never works. God said, I'm going to blow on your hand. Ain't nothing going to be blessed. You, you didn't work and work. You, in fact, they gave you four hours overtime, and you still ain't made the ends meet. Because you're under a curse from God because you said, I'm going to serve the Lord, and then you don't even show up. Now, let me get a little deeper now. You say, I was coming to church. I may see you maybe once every three or four months. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> I'm not mad at nobody because I'm not the one beating you up. I'm just standing here looking at smiling, looking at you going through. Amen. Ain't nothing I can do. You're the one that said, I'm going to be serve you, Lord, all the days of my life. I will be in church. I will train up my children in the church. You're the one that said, I didn't say it. You did. So God said, you said it. Now, where's the result of it? I'm just going to dig down and it's going to say, ouch, and I'll put a band-aid on later after, after service. We're going to pray for you. Amen. Get you free because you need to be free from making these things. You need to make a commitment. When you make a commitment to God, you got to keep that commitment. That's where your blessings is. See, even when we give our tithe, the tithe is not for me. It's not for the church. It's for you and your covenant with God. You're saying, Lord, I'm ratifying the covenant with you. You are my blessing. I'm giving this to you, Lord. I want to make sure that I'm in covenant with you. I love you enough to give you 10% of what you gave me 90% to keep. Amen. And, you can, and God said, I can increase that, multiply that 90% anytime I want so you can give even more. So you got to be faithful. You ain't paid tithes in five years. And then you wonder why you're struggling. Come on now. This is in the Bible. It says the curse is the man and all the you curse with a curse. I can't help you in that area. You got to step in. I had to step in myself and make and try it from and get it going myself. When I learned how to start paying tithes and start giving, and the devil said, "You giving that? You giving that? You ain't supposed to give that. Why you put it? Why you put it?" And I just kept giving, and all of a sudden, after about six months, all stuff started working in the right way. Money started coming in, favor started coming in, promotion started coming in, jobs started. Everything started working when I started. Proving God that He would He would stand up. You don't try to pay tithes; you pay your tithes. I'm gonna try and see if it works. No, it's a commitment between you and God in your covenant with Him. Keep your word. If you don't want to keep your word, you know what I mean. You just gonna struggle. Amen. We try to help you a little bit with the food pantry, but it's closed down now. <laughs> Hannah made a vow to the Lord. She didn't have a child. And she said, if you give me a child, I'll submit him back to you. And she vowed a vow and said, Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look upon this affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and forget not thy handmaid, but will give me thy handmaid, a man, child, I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Just like Hannah prayed over uh, uh, to give uh, uh, Samuel to God, you got your grandmama and great granddaddy and them giving you over to demons. Amen. They said, if you give me a child, I'll give you, uh, I, I'll sacrifice him uh, uh, unto you uh, when he gets older. I mean, it's happening all over right now. It, all over the earth right now, there's so much witchcraft going on. People going to the witch doctor, going to palm readers and stuff, and, and said, if I can let's have a child, uh, I'll, I'll dedicate him to this demon, I'll dedicate it to this. And you don't realize you've been dedicated to some spirit. People, this, this is happening. I'm, I'm dealing with people, with this, and then they're wondering why these demons are coming at night trying to sleep with them. And the demons say, that's my spiritual wife, or that's my spiritual husband, because they were dedicated to me, and I have a right to them in the spirit realm. 
I'm going to break these bands, these snares that the enemy has, has snared uh, 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 us with. There is an integrity that when you walk with God, there is an integrity that keeps you from being snared by the enemy. Psalms 15, verse 1 to 3 said, Lord, who shall dwell temporarily in your tabernacle? Who shall dwell permanently upon your holy hill? He who walks and lives uprightly and blamelessly, who works righteous and justice and speaks and thinks the truth in his heart. He who does not slander with his tongue, nor does evil with his friend, nor take up a reproach with his neighbor. You got control of your mouth. You ain't arguing with everybody all the time. Cussing everybody out. You got control of your mouth. You walk righteous. You ain't trying to get over on somebody else. Let your answer coming out of your mouth be yes or no. That protects your character. Jesus said let your answer be yes or no. Anything else is sin. That's why I say, you ask me, are you coming to the conference? No. Are you coming to the banquet? No. Are you coming? Yes. I don't say maybe or, or, or I'm thinking about it. I say yes or no. Jesus said anything else is evil. Tell somebody you come and you don't show up. That's evil. Because they didn't, they didn't pay for you. They didn't put, made a banquet for you. <laughs> they didn't show up for you. You ain't RSB for you or nothing. And then you show up at the door and they ain't got no seat for you. And now you're mad. Psalm 15, 4 says, In whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he who honors those who fear the Lord, who revere and worship him, who swears to his own hurt and does not change, he who does not put out his money for interest to one of his own people but, and who will not take a bribe against the innocent, he who does these things shall never be moved. When you say something, you're going to do something, you do it. Your man, your character, your word is your bond. Now, it used to be when you shook someone's hand, they, that, was, that was the bond. Now you better have a contract. You better have a signed contract that this is what you're going to do, this is what I'm going to do. Amen? In fact, they got prenuptial agreements now. You got to sign this thing. If you got to sign a prenuptial, you ain't even worth getting married. You need to stay single. It's a trust thing. It's a loyalty thing. And so as we, as we step in now, that was last week. That was last week's message. I didn't even talk today's message. That was just review of last week. You got to get the tape. There's a lot on it. Prophetically, God has positioned us to church to begin to step into a new land. You're in a new era. You're in a new dimension and a new land that you're about to possess. The warfare that we did in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, we're not doing. It's a different type of warfare that we're warring against. The Lord gave me this the other night, at 2 o'clock in the morning. The Lord said, tell your people to begin to be aware of the enemy putting landmines and IEDs in your new spiritual land. Landmines are to blow you up. The enemy already knows that God wants to bless you. The enemy already knows that he's giving you new territory. The enemy already knows that you're going to be blessed coming in and blessed going out. So he's gone into your spiritual land and he set up landmines and traps and snares to keep you from getting the blessing that belong to you. So you're going to have to be aware of landmines. And what he said, he said, the landmines are, beware of contracts with booby traps in them. You know, ever seen that read that small print? Those are landmines. Those are, those are IEDs, amen. You, you went and bought that car and, and, and the little write it down on the Bible said, we can come get it after 30 days if you don't make your first payment. And you sitting at home, you didn't miss the first payment, and you look out the window and your car gone. You're trying to think, what am I? they didn't stole my car. No, they didn't repossess your car because you didn't read the small print. But way of signing anything with lawyers in this hour. There's so many people suing people, going crazy. They're going to sue crazy. They look, do you know they look for people that have at least 100,000 or 200,000 so they can sue them? They'll have people run into you, into your car, because they figure you got some money. And they'll try to sue you. You got to be careful in this hour. Beware of debt traps. We talked about debt. Debt is a trap that you can't never get out of. You keep using that credit card and charge card and that 24% interest and 29% interest and 30% interest, you will never get out of that trap. In fact, if you read in Webster's Dictionary, it says debt, the definition of debt in Webster's Dictionary, go look it up, sin. 
Read, look up the dictionary. It says debt is a sin. I look it up in Webster's Dictionary. I looked it up. I said, what? Debt is a sin. Yes, it is a sin because once you get in, you can't get out. You're robbing Peter to pay Paul, and then you go in the alley and stick up Paul to pay John. <laughs> Amen. And as soon as John tried to get, get around the next block, you sent a uh, loop to get him. Amen. You're robbing everybody, trying to pay everybody, trying to balance it, and it never comes out uh, any kind of way. Loose your angels. Father, uh, loose your angels and hounds of heaven. That's what the Lord said. So we pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that as we walk into this new dimension, this new spiritual realm, we loose the hounds of heaven to sniff out any contract, any debt, any mind, any IED, anything the enemy has placed in our way, in our path to our destiny, in our path to our purpose. We break the power of the snares of the enemy. We break the power. We ask you to send angels now. Angels, recon teams, angels into our land to remove every trap, every snare that the enemy has set up. You know our destiny, you know our purpose, and you know where we're going, and you know what is it should be in our path. And so you said in Isaiah, he said, uh, you told the prophets to prophesy, take ye up the stumbling blocks out of the way of your people. So Lord, I remove every stumbling block to their future, every stumbling block to their destiny. We remove it now in Jesus' name. Uh, that was snares. Now we're going to deal with witchcraft and sorcery and all the rest of this stuff that are destiny and dream things. Do you realize, some of y'all don't even know that when I cast out demons, my fight is not over. You go home happy and praising God. When I cast out demons, I go home and then I got to wrestle with your demons when they try to attack me at night. Y'all don't know that the demons attack me, deliverance ministers at night? Oh, they'll come. They'll come in my dreams. They'll come. Your, your demons don't like it when they get cast out. But... Let them come. I slap them upside the head. I ain't got no time. I get karate kick them upside the head. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't fooling with them. I don't mess with them. Amen. They won't even come around me. They might come bother you, but they ain't coming bother me. There are people that have literally in the church that their soul is locked in a cage. Do you know there are people that are, that are, that are hunting for you in the spirit to lock up your soul? your mind, your will, your emotions, to lock you up in jail. The devil already had your spirit locked up in jail, and, and when you accept Jesus, he freed your spirit, man. But your soul, people are coming after your soul. Look at Ezekiel 13. I want you to see this. Thus saith the Lord, Woe to the women that sew pillows into armholes and make kerchiefs upon the head of every statue to hunt souls will you hunt souls of my people will you save souls uh, save souls alive that come unto you they literally in the spirit and these witches capture your soul all the person needs to do is find a piece of your hair or a piece of your clothing or something and take it to them and they will lock up your soul some of you are going through sicknesses all your life. You don't even realize why you've been sick all your life. They locked up your blessing. People can, you, do you know when you go to a palm reader or, or something like that, they can see your star? Everybody in here has a star when you're born. The wise men followed Jesus' star. Jesus had a star. He said, in fact, Pharaoh said, I want to follow him too because Pharaoh was trying to get his star. They knew that Jesus was going to be a great one. He was going to be the, the coming king. And so Pharaoh said, I want to follow that star too. Demons can see, witches can see your star, uh, the potential, the greatness that is in you and the blessings that belong to you and they go in the spirit realm and begin to steal it. Promotions, jobs, children, money, wealth. They know how to steal and how to capture your soul if they can get you in certain sins and certain positions, then your soul is captured. Then you wonder why you have these migraines, why you got these headaches all the time, wonder why your eyes are heavy all the time, you want to sleep all the time, you, 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 you get sore throats all the time, You're just trying to figure out where's all this stuff coming? Somebody then did something to capture your destiny. Verse 19 of Ezekiel 13. And I will pollute me among the people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread to slay souls that should not die. 
and, and save souls that should not live by your lying to my people. You, they hear your lie. See, you got these witches, and uh, uh, when you go to Haiti, they go into the water. They got water demons. They got uh, marine spirits that possess these people, and people become possessed. They become zombies. These demons come into people and, and, and through witchcraft and through seances and through incantations. and, and what just, That's why it's so powerful that what you speak, when you speak the word of God, you speak life. They speak death over you and you got to speak life over you. Uh, they're going to steal your blessings if you don't know that they're speaking things. You don't know what somebody did to you. You didn't have 15 girlfriends in your lifetime. Which one of them got so mad that they went to a, a, a witch doctor, a witch a warlock, a sorcerer, and spoke things against you because they hated you because you said you was going to marry them and you didn't change your mind? People are wicked. They're evil. I guarantee you. And they curse you. Don't let them never have any good kids. If they have any kids, let them all be bad. They'll speak stuff against your kids. Even married people would do that if they get a divorce. They, they, you ever seen the fight once divorce take place? They used to be nice. Oh, calls come out, snarling, and the person turned into Dracula all of a sudden. No. Here, this is what happened not only in India. I've been to India. I travel to Africa. I'm all over Africa. What they do is they will get something of yours, an article of yours, and they will get a lock. This, this witch doctor will take a lock and they will take it and they'll tear up that idol and they'll tie it to a lock and lock up your destiny and lock up your blessings and lock up your health. Lock up any promotions that come. They lock up and you, and you wonder, why am I poor all the day that you went to school, you fail in school. You try to get a college degree, they kick you out. You can't keep a house, they kick you out. These folks have worked some stuff on you. But in the name of Jesus, the Lord told me to tell you, he's breaking every lock that the enemy has placed over your life, every lock that he's bound up that it belongs to you from your ancestors, your great-grandmama and your, your grandmama, all of them that have been cursed, the curse is broken in your lifetime. The locks are coming off of you right now. You're coming out of the cages of the enemy. You're coming out of the snares of the enemy. You're coming out of the traps of the enemy. God is clearing, clearing, clearing your land so you can be free. There's a demonic lock on your prosperity. You ever notice that? Think about it. I want you to think about your family. Think about your children. What are their lives like? Think about it. Are they prosperous? Are they sick all the time? Got mental problems all the time? Somebody did something. It's not God's will for people to be afflicted and bound and sick all their life got mental problems all the time got got to take them to mercy hall all the time something going on something something has happened that where the enemy has taken their destiny and bound it up you got to declare that your hands are blessed Psalms 90 verse 17 says, And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou, Lord. Lord said he would bless the works of my hands. I don't know about your hands, but I'm taking the locks off of my hand and that my hands are blessed. Everything I touch is blessed. Everything I do is blessed. I have to speak it. I have to declare it. You just can't think and just, oh, I wonder how I'm going to make it. No, I'm going to make it because my hands are blessed. I'm going to make it because they're going to give me a job. I may not have a job right now, but I'm going to have a job because I see myself being blessed all the time of the Lord. Amen. I may not have all the money in the world that I need right now. I might have a temporary cash flow problem, but it's coming to me sooner or later. It's got to bless me. I'm breaking that lock off my hands. I'm breaking that, that chain off my hand. You got to speak this out of your mouth. You got to speak it. I'm speaking it now, but you got to speak it. You don't speak it, you don't get it. But it sounds silly, me standing there talking, talking to myself. You better talk to yourself. <laughs> you better stand in the mirror and talk. Say, self, I'm sick of you. We're going to get blessed. I'm sick of you not serving God. We're going to get blessed. Look in the mirror. That's the biggest enemy you got. Put blaming everything on the devil. You the, you the main problem. Look at yourself and say, I'm sick of you, self. You need to get it together. Amen. You need to serve the Lord. We're going to church. Amen. And flesh, you coming with me. Because the flesh will lay in that bed on Sunday morning and we don't want to move. 
You got to say, flesh, you got to get up and come too. You got to tell your flesh that. He'll lay there. So you're fighting, you fighting your soul, your mind, your emotions, and you're fighting your flesh and your spirit man trying to get in control of all this mess going on. Spirit man saying, shh, don't say that. Your flesh and your mind, I'll cuss them out in a minute. And the spirit man said, no. Speak what Jesus speak. I don't care what Jesus speak. I'm going to tell him peace of my mind. I feel better. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And let me just, I don't, I, I don't have time to, to teach on it, I, I talked to Connie. I'm talking about a workaholic is a product of an alcoholic. If you have an alcoholic parent that always there, or a workaholic parent, your child will become a workaholic. And if he's a workaholic, that means that he's not at home all the time. And then the children become alcoholics because they rebel and say, "Well, Dad really don't care about me because he don't have no time to spend with me." And so the children become they get in rebellion, stubbornness, and disobedience. And then that cycle goes on. And then their children become alcoholic, workaholic, alcoholic, workaholic, alcoholic. That cycle. You got to break the cycle. It's a cycle that has to be broken. So we break every cycle, Lord, that the enemy has placed on us. We break every snare, every cycle, and we stop it right now. That thing, we've been on a rent cycle too long. It's time for to get on a spin cycle, and it's time to dry out in Jesus' name. How many of you have had a washing machine get stuck on spin cycle, or wash, uh, uh, the wash cycle, the rinse cycle all the time? I need to just break this thing. Every year, the same thing. Every year, the same problem. Every year, same issue. Every year, amen. You move from one church, same demons at the other church. Amen. It's the same sister that got mad, you got ugly with at one church. She's, there's another one, look, they don't look alike, but you got the same spirit. And they get right next to you. God will chase you and, and dog you all over wherever you go. You got to break these cycles. Demons will try to change what's been imparted to you. They send distractions. I've laid hands on thousands. And, and, and the demons will come and try to stop the destiny that God has for you. To distract you. To get someone. They'll send somebody, a, a, a man. They'll send a woman. They'll send a job. They'll send something to distract you from where God wants you to go. That is a snare of the enemy. He's putting a trap in your path to stop you. So if God said, I want you to be this. That's why I got to pull the prophecies out. That gives you direction. This is where I need to be going. What am I doing way over here? I done went all down chasing rabbits everywhere. I was supposed to be on this path over here, and I'm way over here lost in the jungle somewhere. We need to come back to God and get back to where he wants to not be distracted. Amen. Set my heart on fire, Lord. I want to know you. I want to know you. I don't want to know anything else but you. People, listen, even on your jobs, people will see your door to success and will do everything to hinder you from going into that door. They will steal your door of opportunity. I've seen it happen on jobs. Uh, you in line for the promotion, and then this knucklehead come in, ain't been there three weeks. They got the, how did they get the promotion? The little witch come in and take over everything. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know they laughing, but they know what I'm talking about. As I said, when Herod had heard about Jesus' star, he said, go, search diligently for the young child, and when you found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. No, Herod wanted to kill him. Right. People don't want you to, uh, uh, on your job to get a promotion. You try to climb up the ladder, and they try to pull you back down. Like a, uh, 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 I got a picture of it. There it is. A barrel of crabs. Yeah. They'll block you when you try to have ability. They're supposed to advanced you, supposed to boost you, and, and they'll block you. They'll try to go through the door themselves because they see your blessing on that door. They don't have a, a future, so they try to steal yours. You got to watch people. And usually if somebody's close to you, they get up close to you. They want to be your friend. And, and, and I've seen so many instances of people being, being duped by their friends. And next thing you know, your friend has stole your husband. Better watch it. They see your blessings, and they want your blessings. They'll work something on your husband. They'll do a seance. They'll, do, they'll, they'll go to a witch doctor. It, it, it is, it, people are doing it because when economies get bad, people go to, to dark places, try to get answers. You know, everybody, and when I was growing up, they had that, you know, Miss, uh, Miss Mamie down the street, you know, that lady, the root worker, down on the corner, go see her. She'll tell you what's going on. 
if you ever did that or ever been involved in that, if you go to someone to read your palm or someone to try to tell your future, they see your future and they steal it. Am I going to have a husband? Oh, yeah, you're going to have a husband. Chucky, but we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to make sure you get one. <laughs> I'm going to steal Chucky to you, yeah? I'm not gonna, and she's going to steal your blessing. Why would you go to somebody to try to get the lucky pick or the lucky number and they don't even know the number themselves? How come they are so living in the old raggedy storefront trying to prophesy and try to read your palm and they ain't got nothing themselves? If they know all this stuff, they should be able to do it for themselves. There are destiny stealers that come and steal your destiny. King Saul was not supposed to die like he died. But because of his upbringing, because of the snares of poverty and the poverty mentality in him and the jealousy that he got over David, uh, he was jealous over David, he was jealous, he got out of order and he went and tried to sacrifice when Samuel told him, stay there 10 days, I'm going to come and I'll do the sacrifice. You're just a king, you're not a priest. Don't step into something that doesn't belong to you. You're not authorized to do the sacrifice. And he went in and he grabbed hold of the, uh, Samuel's garment and God said, this day the kingdom has been ripped out of your hands. And then he went to the wicked witch of Endor to try to get a word. See, when you don't get a word from God and God's mad at you, ain't talking to you, people try to run and get a word from somebody else and somewhere else, the wrong place. But destiny stealers come to lock you up, cage up your spirit, cage up your emotions, bind you up so you can't focus on what you're trying to get to and where you're trying to go. But we break the power of those spirits that, that bind. There are bound soul men in cage. Every cage, God said, I'm opening. I'm opening the door for you to get out. Every cage that has a lock on it, I'm breaking that cage that your soul can be free. Your mind, will, and emotions need to be free, need to have peace, need to have tranquility. All, all this fight, all this stress, all this frustration, all this anger is not of God. That's from the enemy that distracts you from where you need to be spiritually. As I said years ago, and I still said, I'm still saying it to today, Andy, you can pay me now and you can pay me later, but you're going to pay. You know, you just tell people, you can get delivered now or you can get delivered later, but you're going to get delivered. Amen. It may take you a little while to get around, but you're going to get it. Amen. You can come to God and let him deal with you on the altar. You let him deal with you on the operating table, or you can get up and run, and, but he's still going to be standing there waiting on you to come back because he's the only one that can set you free. He's the only one that can set you free. He's a patient. Remember now, God is not in time. So you'd have ran 20 years, it'd be about two minutes for Jesus. <laughs> it'd be about two minutes for him because he's outside of time. He created time for us. Jeremiah had to deal with this, with these witches, with these palm readers and, and reading your palm. He said, Jeremiah 5, 25, he said, your iniquities have turned away these things. Your sins have withholding good things from you. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he set a snares. They set a trap. They catch men. And if you think it ain't prevalent right now, if you see these little signs on the corners around here, I need an apprentice to learn real estate or I need a, 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 a work, a 40 hour, a 40 hour week travel vacation, uh, travel time and training time and stuff. These little signs you see on the little corners there, a lot of them are, 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 are hunting for souls, hunting for people to traffic. Sex traffic. Put them in bondage. They're looking for people to sell the body parts now. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. They're looking for body parts. They're looking for anybody they can sex, whether they can sex traffic your children or you. They're trying to snatch them out of the store. They're trying to snatch them out of your shopping cart. This thing is getting, the, the spirit realm, the heavenly warfare that we did in the 2000s and the 90s has come down to the earth now. Demons are openly manifesting in front of us. And people don't even realize that they're demons. They set a trap for you. They'll put... Uh, one of the little traps they set up is they, they put a business card on your windshield if you're at a gas station and they got chemicals on it that make you knock you out and then they rob you. You better watch and discern. The iniquities 
have withhold our sins stop us from being blessed. I don't know how to, how to say this any other way. When we stay away from God, and when we don't serve God, and when we stay in the sin, and we get into stuff that we ain't supposed to get into, it blocks good things from coming to your house. Guarantee you. God's trying to send an angel to your house. Soon as the angel get close to the door, getting ready to knock, he can listen inside and hear all that fighting and arguing. That angel turn around and got to go. He said, I can't go into that strife. I can't go into that atmosphere and take your blessing right back to heaven as I'll try it again maybe next month. Just when you're supposed to get it. These witches will capture your soul. Your soul is located right here in your, in your stomach area, your spirit man. They literally will capture a person's spirit or soul and put it in a bottle and lock it just like that. That's what your soul looks like, your spirit looks like. They lock it in a bottle. I've seen these, these, uh, they do it, uh, these, these successful businessmen uh, in Africa, in India, all of these politicians and stuff, all of them are working witchcraft. They all go to the witch doctor to get money for positions for power. And they have to sacrifice something, either a child, a brother, a cousin, a mama, a grandmama to get this money. Poverty would make you do some crazy stuff. And, and they capture these people's spirit. And this man, these men can be great men. They can be great businessmen and have, have children, have a wife. And, and this witch will come in and, 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 and get, put something in his drink or put something. And boom, his mind is controlled. And next, next thing you know, he out there fornicating and in adultery and doing things he ain't supposed to do. He don't even know why. He's buying this woman cars and putting her in a house and putting her in an apartment. See, people, people, are, 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 people are wicked. People are wicked. When you shack up with somebody, I, I saw this in the spirit the other day. I didn't share it with the sister, but I saw this in the spirit. That the boyfriend went out to it with his other friend, and his friend told him, why don't you work this, do this witchcraft thing, and you'll control her, and she'll do everything you, told, you want her to do. Y'all better watch out. She's, you don't want a boyfriend. You want a husband. Trust me. Trust me. The wicked murder for your destiny. They will sell your kids and sell, sell your destiny. Uh, you wonder why all these women are going around, why they're barren or have miscarriages. That's a curse. That's a curse. Or nobody, uh, none of the males in the family have any children. That's a curse. The wicked murder for your destiny. Ezekiel twenty-two twenty-five says, there is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion ravening the prey, they have devoured souls. They have taken treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. That's the other thing is, is, is all these false prophets running around here. And prophesying for money. And well, you send me $100. And, and you see them on Facebook all the time. I get, they already got a, a, ca a, a cash app. Uh, send me money you know, for my ministry and, and PayPal and everything else. Or come get a $50 and $50 you get a prophecy or you give $100. Everybody give $1,000 I got a prophetic word for you. That is the prophets prophesying vain things for God's people. The prophets need to be telling you about your sin. My job is to point your sin out that you may not go into a snare. You may not go into a trap. In fact, uh, a lamentation said it's the job of the prophet to keep you from going into captivity. So if I tell you, you will you see the trap, you won't go into that trap. There, the fire of God, I put the fire of God on all dream stillers. Uh, 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 there's a whole teaching out there on dreams. Uh, that demons will have you eaten in your dream. Don't ever eat in your dream. You don't know what you're eating. You ever had a, you, know, you think you're eating barbecue and you be eating worms. You don't know what in your dream. They come in your dreams to steal your destiny. They come in your dream. You're always having this one dream. That, oh, this dog is always chasing me. This thing is always chasing me. Well, you got an issue that you need to deal with. If you got a dog chasing you, dogs mean strife and, and, and contention. Amen? So you got to learn how to dream. The dream stealers, the, 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 they come and steal your dreams. Joseph had a dream he dreamed a dream, and he told his brothers, and the dream became a nightmare. They threw him in a pit. They sold him to slavery. He went to jail. He was in jail for years. All of that stuff is that the enemy tried to steal his destiny. But God used the circumstance to bless him in this latter end. So as I said, the Lord said earlier, you may have messed up, but he still got your blessing in store. 
You just got to come back to God to get it. Amen? Repent means to turn around and come back. No, don't, don't try to go left and don't try to go right. Turn around and, where you, and come back to the spot where you messed up and went wrong and then continue with the Lord down the path he wanted you to go down. You can't just keep going back and forth, back and forth with God. You got to do that. Where am I at, Manuel? Give me, give me a time on it. Oh, okay, I need to stop there. I need to stop. I need to stop. Another one is, uh, we'll, we'll get into this next week, snared by drugs, sorcery, pharmakia. Thousands upon thousands are addicted to opioids and pills and pain pills. and All of this stuff is a snare. The only thing that you need to be taking if you're sick or you have a disease is ampicillin or penicillin or amoxicillin. But the rest of this stuff, it ain't doing you no good. They give you a pill for high blood pressure, and then they got to give you a pill for diabetes, and then they got to give you a pill for the pain that's in your back because the high blood pressure made your head hurt, and now you got a pill for that. And you got so many people. If I go to your medicine cabinet, good Lord, all that money you could have had, you spent it on medicine. Because you don't want to get your life right. God said, get to the gym and exercise. I don't want to do that. Well, keep eating them Twinkies and pies and cakes and see what happens to you. Amen? Keep eating that junk and see what happens to you. You the one suffering. God ain't suffering. You come to God, Lord, heal me. And God said, you still got that biscuit in your mouth and chips on your <laughs> lips. And you want me to heal you for you to go back and do the same thing tomorrow. Isaiah 47, last scripture, Isaiah 47, 9. But these two things shall come upon thee in a moment, in one day. He said, you go to this sorcery, you go to this pharmacy, you go take this potion. He said, the loss of children and widowhood. You're going to lose your husband, you're going to lose your kids. They shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries, for great abundance of thy enchantments. You got to know that people are speaking. Right now, between September and Halloween, the witches in America are fasting and praying against Trump, against America succeeding, against America being great, against you having a job. They want to see destruction of America. There are people praying to see Armageddon. Can you imagine that? They are praying to see the judgment of God to come on the earth. And when God said, I want to bring peace on the earth and blessing on the earth, and he got people praying to destroy America and destroy uh, uh, through these prayers that they're doing and this craziness that's going on. We got to break that stuff. You can't, be, you can't be lax in this hour. Demons are praying against you. The, your bloodline demons are coming against you. Some of you got some demons in your bloodline that you don't even know about. And if you don't come to church, God ain't going to show you who they are. And you keep wondering why I'm not successful, wonder I'm not, why I'm not doing it. You wonder why I got this attitude all the time. Now I can't seem to break this thing all the time. I always want to fight somebody. I always want to cuss somebody out. That's probably from way back then, from somebody in your, grand, your grandpapa. Them spirits are coming against you. You got to know who you are in Christ Jesus and who's in your bloodline. A lot of us are in here, I got Cherokee blood in me. I don't know what my Cherokee ancestors would. I know they were worshiping the, or the totem poles and coyote and, and peyote and coyote and all kind of arrow, the order of the arrow and the frog and the owl and, the, and the, the, all that kind of crazy. I don't No wonder I was, I, I was an alcoholic. Amen. That was from my Cherokee side. Amen. I got to hold that fire water. <laughs> it was over me. <laughs> that was a curse. I don't know what's going on. I didn't know what they were doing back there in the woods down in Mississippi way back then. We don't know what they were doing down in Alabama when the lights was out. But God wants to break that. God wants to break the snares, the cycle, and everything, and we break that thing. As I said, in my family, I have 10 brothers and sisters. Every one of us got a divorce. My father divorced my mom. All 10 of us got a divorce. Every one. Until I broke that curse. That thing was on the family. Didn't realize it. Poverty. Grew up in poverty. Grew up in lack. And when I realized it in deliverance, I couldn't fault my father because he didn't know. He didn't know he was cursed. He didn't know what he was doing. He did what his daddy did, probably, you know, 
He was a rolling stone. I got half sisters and brothers. I, don't, I can't even count no more. I don't know how many. I'm scared to ask. I know. I didn't find out about 14 of them. I don't know. Thank God. But God wants your snares. The snare is a trap. Just like a mouse trap. There's a piece of bait in there. You stick your little head in there and you are trapped. It's a snare. A snare is something that the hunter places in your path where you normally walk and you don't see it and it snares you. Uh, or an animal gets snared or a badger gets snared. Uh, you know, a badger get in a snare and uh, I like him because he'll bite his arm, he'll bite his leg off to get out the snare. Jesus said it's better for you to go in one eye or one arm or one hand. It's better to go in the kingdom with that than to go to hell with your, all your faculties. It's better to cut off. If something in you offends you, cut it off. Don't, don't let it stay in your life. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. What I'm a... <clears throat> Where's my, where's my book? I'm a, we're going to say some prayers here to get you free real quick. Hallelujah. I don't even know what I did in my warfare prayer booklet. But let's, let's, I, want, I, want you to, uh, I want you to pray. I, you know, me praying is fine. But I want you to pray over your own life. And I'm going to come in agreement with you. I'm just going to pray and you come in a, and you pray and you ask the Lord to break and reveal any snare Ask him, you know, why is my husband snared and he won't come to church? Why are my children won't serve the Lord? Why are my nephew on drugs? What is the curse? What is the thing? What is the thing that has them snared? Where is it at, Lord? And I'm going to break it. We're going to break it this morning. We're going to break the bands of wickedness off of, the, off the enemy, off of our lives in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over every trap Every snare, I want you to pray. Go ahead and pray. Father, I break this off my bloodline, off my children, off my grandchildren. I break it in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is against the enemy that has stolen my blessings, that have stolen uh, our family line blessings, as my great-grandmother and great-grandfather, uh, things that they've done. We break the snare. We break the chain. Every lock in the spirit realm, everything that has been locked up in me, I command to open now in the name of Jesus. You said you are the God that opens doors that no man can shut, and you shut doors that no man can open. So we pray this uh, morning, Lord, that you will break open the doors that the enemy has shut on us. You will break open the locks that he has locked open. We break open every safe where the enemy has, has taken our blessings and our prosperity and put it in a safe. We unlock that safe. We blow it up and we command the, the substance and the precious things that belong to our generation to be released today. Father, we're not looking for next week. We want it today. We want the blessings that belong to us today. Everything that the enemy has put in our path, remove it now. Every stumbling block. Father, if there's been children, if there's been girlfriends and boyfriends and soul ties, we break in the name of Jesus. Every spoken curse that has been spoken against me, we declare that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, that every word that rise up in judgment, we condemn it this day. Father, we break every working of witches and warlocks that has come in to destroy our household, that has come in to destroy our home. We break it in the name of Jesus and we send it back to the center. Everything in our bloodline that have worked in Sangomas and, and witch doctors that have done things in our, our ancestors, our fathers, our grandfathers, our great-grandfathers, they have making vows and pledges to these demons. But Lord, we reverse the curse in the name of Jesus. We break the words that have been spoken over our lives, that have been spoken to steal our destiny, that have been spoken to steal our purpose, that have been spoken. Every word, we cast it down now in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare that every chain in this place is broken. Every fetter is broken. Every web is broken. Every snare is broken. Every cord is broken. Every wire is broken. Every trap, every spider web is broken in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you break us and set us free this morning. Who the Son makes free is free indeed. Free us this morning. Free your people this morning. Every spirit that, that has put a lock on your mind. Every spirit that has put a lock on your emotions. Every spirit that has put a lock on your 
your thinking. We break it now in Jesus' name. Every mind control spirit must go. Every spirit that has stolen your money, your promotion, your job, in the name of your peace, I command it to come back sevenfold in Jesus' name. He said if you find a thief, he shall give back sevenfold. We command the enemy to give back what he has stolen in our bloodline sevenfold. We command blessings to be released today in the name of Jesus. Let goodness and mercy overtake your people this morning, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let peace come where there's been strife, contention, arguing, jealousy, envy. Let it come into our house now. We decree and declare that every person that has done witchcraft, every person that has done control, every manipulating spirit has been broken in the name of Jesus off your minds and off our lives in the name of Jesus. We command every soul tie. Every ungodly soul tie, remove it, Lord. Break it right now. Shove it, shatter it. Every scattered piece of our soul, restore it, Lord. You said you restore our soul. Father, every mistake, every error, every misstep that we made in the past, we ask you to clear it up, straighten it out in the name of Jesus. We ask you to send angels into our new spiritual land that we will be blessed. Father, remove every hindrance, every pit, every landmine, every IED, everything that the enemy has come to blow up and destroy. We command peace and joy. We shall prosper as the soul prospers. We thank you that we're the head and we're not the tail. We are above and we're not beneath. We shall be blessed coming in and we shall be blessed going out. We decree the word this morning, Lord, that the snares of every ring on anybody's finger that the demons have placed and said that they're married to you, we break it in the name of Jesus. Every contract is broken in the name of Jesus. Every covenant is broken in the name of Jesus. We pull down every ancestral altar in the name of Jesus. We break these altars that have been sacrificed to demons and spirits in the name of Jesus. We break down that religion altar that keeps them in the Baptist church, in the Methodist church, in the Lutheran church, in the Catholic church. We break these religious altars in the name of Jesus. We break these spirit, these altars of lust that has been placed in our bloodline. Every spirit of lust must go in the name of Jesus. Lust, get out of here in the name of Jesus. Lust for position, lust for money, lust for material things, lust for men, lust for women, any kind of lust, idolatry, we break it this morning in the name of Jesus. Every idol spirit, go. Everything that came from piercing, every spirit that came in from tattoos, we command you devils to manifest and go and go. Get out now in the name of Jesus. You must go. Get out now. Every spirit that hinders, every demon that comes at night that destroys your dreams. Every demon that comes at night and attacks you in your sleep. Every demon that comes, we break it now in Jesus' name. You shall rest and have peace for the Lord gives you security and rest. The angels of the Lord encamped around about you and we shall sleep and rest for the Lord takes pleasure in the rest of his saints. Devil, get out now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of high blood pressure, every spirit that causes strife, contention, every spirit that causes frustration, Frustration, get out. Stress, go in the name of Jesus. And Father, we give you the praise and the glory this morning. And we thank you that the yoke is destroyed. Destroyed because of the anointing. We thank you that yokes are destroyed because of the anointing. Now, Father, release the inheritance. Release the words of knowledge, words of wisdom, discernment, gifts of spirits, miracles, working of miracles, signs, wonders. We thank you, Lord, that you're opening up our spiritual eyes. Lay your hands on your eyes. Say, Lord, take away the spiritual blindness in my eyes. Let me see in the spirit what the enemy is trying to do. I give you praise. By faith, my eyes will be open in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Open up my eyes. I want to see what the devil's doing. I want to know what he's doing. I want to see him. God's going to open some of your eyes. You're going to begin to see angels. You're going to begin to see where the enemy is. And if you see it, don't be afraid of it. Bind it. You see him working? Take authority over it in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, if you need prayer, come on up on the altar. I know some of y'all probably need some good old-fashioned bucket, gut-wrenching deliverance. I'm going to pray for you. Amen. I want to, uh, uh, Emma and um, choose one. Choose.